Yep. Good we're morning. Li we're live right away. We are. <laughs> Good morning. We don't get our countdown anymore, so. No, yeah. we need a countdown. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Family Jewels, and uh, today we're going to be talking about metals, and mainly we're going to be sticking with precious metals. Uh, we may bring up a couple of the others, but really what we want to right. talk about is the, yeah, I think the we, precious metals. Yeah, I think yeah. maybe we just talk about a couple of them to begin with, because... This could get really long otherwise. Yeah, yeah. We don't want a real long run. <laughs> anyway, um, so in recent years, um, in the silver world, there's been some development with, with the alloys that have kind of changed the game a little bit with silver. Um, with gold, kind of had some of the same things happen. Um, more so for different reasons, though. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, still kind of interesting, and we kind of wanted to inform you some guys. Of it, some of it kind of the same, I guess. Yeah. And on the on the silver, kind of what Colton's talking about is they've come up with a way to alloy basically some of the platinum metals with and make sterling silver instead of using copper and what else do they use in there nickel? brass tin yeah nickel i mean it just so, it depends on who's doing the alloy really so normally sterling silver um if you don't rhodium finish the piece it's going to tarnish yeah and sometime or somewhere along the line after the rhodium wears off it's still going to tarnish <laughs> yeah so they came up with, and I, and I think I even figured out how they did this, because platinum, the platinum metals are completely different metals than what silver is. Oh, yeah. And trying to alloy, you're going to basically do that alloy process. It's not like you mix flour and sugar and milk and stir it together and it all <laughs> yeah. it all ends up making a cake or something like that. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. This you got it requires heat. Okay, so the heat to me to melt silver or flow silver, I guess, is considerably less than what it takes to Oh yeah. get platinum to to melt. So if it was if it was baked goods <laughs> yeah, there would be no silver. Yeah, you could you could bake silver, but uh, platinum you're gonna burn down the kitchen first. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I guess if you were trying to bake them together, you'd have silver silver melted, and the platinum would just be sitting there, just going, oh, it's a little sauna here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> or a hot tub, I guess, would be instead of a sauna. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a trick of alloying those metals together, but once you do then you get uh the real beauty of both metals which is it's kind of really like nice. it's almost a little bit like antifreeze yeah so you know if you have just the glycol stuff straight it doesn't it can freeze yeah it can freeze and it doesn't dissipate heat as well yeah so but if you and make, water's the same way yeah and, and so we end up you mix the two together and actually both get better yeah. Or the mix gets better because, yeah. you know, it dissipates heat better and it doesn't freeze. Yeah. Lowers its freezing temperature. And yeah. raises its... Boiling point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, it, there's a... And I don't know that it's the case in everything, but there's a little unknown metal to most people called gallium. And gallium kind of does what antifreeze does for... For water It'll it's like the safe mercury because it melts at like 80 degrees or 89 degrees something like that so you can actually put it in your hands and it'll melt in your hands right. the gallium will and actually if anybody's seen like the uh melting spoon trick yeah where it looks like you know they they have like a they have a gallium spoon but it looks like a silver spoon and they put it like in a hot coffee or something and like... they pull it out and it's just a nub <laughs> it's actually gallium is what it's made out of so it has a really low melting melting temperature and uh, but whenever they use it plus either palladium or platinum in with silver what they end up with is a metal that's stronger harder it doesn't tarnish or yeah. 
doesn't tarnish very easily. Basically, it's doing the same thing like the water and the antifreeze. They're taking on the best properties of each other. Well, actually, it's more than, silver. It's silver more than is that. taking on the, um, you know, the I'm not as expensive as everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the platinum's super expensive, but you use very little of it. And it actually, believe it or not, even though both metals are softer than gold, they're actually both really soft metals. You put them together, they actually strengthen and harden one another. They kind of even out their melting temperature because the what we call the continuum silver, which is this alloy we're talking about actually, it does raise the melting point and flow point a little bit. But really the polish, the finish, the ability to set stones, the type of malleability it has, um, all of that changes and actually gets better. And so well, at you least have, from our, our point of view, it gets yeah. better. So you can have basically a sterling silver alloy that takes on more properties of like white gold. It's a little bit harder. It's better to set stones in. You don't still have to have the pieces made have, as bulky. It still but, doesn't have, as, doesn't have the memory, though. It's, it's still still pretty much a dead metal. Yeah, it's a little, it, it is a little bit of a dead metal. It does have some memory in it, but um, it's not like white gold. But the thing is, is you've got a less expensive alternative to white gold that no longer tarnishes or is much or, more resistant even to tarnishing. Less expensive than platinum. It's less expensive than <laughs> platinum. But it's more expensive than regular sterling silver. Yeah, and the other good thing is too, is a lot of people are allergic to white gold, and we'll get to that in a minute, why there's an allergy problem there. Whereas with this continuum, you're not gonna have you're not going to have near the issues no. because you're actually eliminating the one metal in the alloy that is normally the culprit for an allergy. And so by adding platinum, which pla all platinum metals and platinum metals by that I mean is a group. So there's actually several different metals within the platinum group. They, they just have like similar characteristics. Yeah. Not, and not um, exactly the same, you know, there's a little variance in everything. But. Yeah. But they're all hypoallergenic, which is really nice. So you have platinum, palladium, ruthenium, iridium, and rhodium. rhodium. There's another um, one, osmium. Is that right? Yeah. But, you know, for, for jewelry purposes, mainly what's being used is platinum, palladium, palladium rhodium, and ruthenium. Right. Um, every once in a while we'll use iridium, but not very often. Usually those idioms yeah. <laughs> we're using for plating purposes uh, just because they're extremely rare. Um, well, but, and, and like, I have never seen solid rhodium, and I've always... I've seen a picture of it. Really? And it was a little cube about that big. <laughs> <laughs> what I've heard is that it's really brittle. So it's really brittle, it's, it's really hard, it's, but it's reason. really, really white. Yeah, really, really silver. Yes, really silver. More silver than silver. Yes. Yeah, which is so, kind of weird. So anyway, with, with, this, um, with this new continuum silver, we're actually able to make sterling silver pieces that they hold up better, they have a better polish, we can set stones in them like what we would in gold, so you can prong set stuff a little bit better. And that's, because, that's something maybe we need to bring up. Yeah. Okay, where silver is soft, and then it has no memory, and what we need, mean by that, it's similar to like... Can't a, make a spring yeah, out of it. Right. Because so, if you make a spring and you go to squish it, it just stays there. So one reason why we keep bringing this up, we can set stones in it. There are sterling silver, regular sterling silver rings out there that are prong set, but that's a really bad idea because yeah. there's not enough metal there because if you don't have some tension or uh, memory in that metal. Well, and mainly the reason we need that is because that metal is so soft. Right. Because the silver is crazy soft. Right. So, you know, like a, a really good reason why uh, Indian jewelry or native jewelry, native, Ameri yeah, the native, native American, American jewelry, jewelry, I always do it that way, is, you know, it's bezel set. The reason for that is they need that metal there because otherwise you get, if it had just a prong, you could push the you could, prong. And, yeah, a lot of those prongs you could move with a fingernail. So, so yeah. there's a lot of sterling silver jewelry out there that's prong set that shouldn't be prong set because yeah. you're going to have problems. I mean, oh, yeah, for you, sure. You need to make a piece of jewelry to last at least seven years. 
you know, and if you do sterling, just straight sterling silver. Uh, and we want to make stuff that's going to last like 70 plus years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at least seven years. And yeah. I'm going to say a lot of the sterling silver jewelry out there, you may be, yeah. you may be a year, you might be good. So it's almost yeah. throwaway, yeah. throwaway jewelry. So now, whenever we have the opportunity when we're doing sterling silver stuff, we try and use that continuum as often as possible. Um, it does hold a better polish. It doesn't have as much maintenance. Um, it is slightly more expensive than sterling, but not a lot. Um, but we kind of, I think kind of, it's about twice as much. Well, I mean, it's still not gold price. Right. Yeah. So, and then, and with that, we need to talk about some of the gold. So, most people are familiar with 14 carat and 18 carat and all the carats of golds out there. Um, but one thing that only a handful are familiar with are the allergy reactions and stuff. And that's what's kind of um, spurred on some of these new alloys that are out because we have several customers that are uh, allergic to some of those alloys. And in particular, they're actually having a nickel allergy. And what we're talking about is actually in white gold, since gold's natural color is yellow, you have to mix white metals in to turn it white. So you can't you and, can't have 24 karat white and gold. What, what's it's impossible. Even, what's even more amazing, it doesn't matter how much silver you put in there, you're never going to make that gold white. Right. Which doesn't make any sense. Because actually, <laughs> believe it or not, okay, so normal alloys contain um, copper, silver, with white gold, nickel. Um, you may have a little bit zinc. of tin, zinc, and on occasion you may have some brass, but it would be very, very rare. Yeah, I, I would say um, that, that's gonna make it But dirty. normally what you have, so for yellow gold, for instance, in 14 karat, you're gonna have silver, copper, and maybe a little bit of zinc. Right. Maybe a little bit. Um, for white gold and, alloys, and gold. that's in yellow gold. In gold, you're gonna have gold in there too. Well, in gold, I'm talking about the alloys. Uh, anyway. The other metals. Yes, the other metals. Okay, and then in white gold, you're going to have silver, copper, and nickel, traditionally. Now, the you're problem... You're still going to have some zinc. You may have a little bit of zinc, yeah. Now, the problem gets to be is we have some that have nickel allergies, and so it causes... Mainly, we see it in ears and neck as the first places we see it. Well, Sometimes you'll see it on rings. Yeah, but most often, the first place you'll see yes, issues yes, that earrings. Pierced earrings, earrings yeah. yeah. And so usually what it causes is redness, inflammation, itching, scaling, sometimes blistering, not a lot yeah. of fun stuff. <laughs> Just unpleasant. You yeah. Know, and, and normally, you know, it may be from, they'll notice it in an hour to maybe a day or two. Yeah. And so to avoid that because, you know, the white metals are really, really popular, a lot of times people will just go to platinum and they just say, Forget about it. We're not going to worry with this. We're not going to mess with it. Let's just go to platinum. It's hypoallergenic. We're not going to have to worry about it. And so the problem gets to be with that is it gets real expensive. And sometimes the settings aren't the same just because the metal properties are different. And we'll talk about the platinum here in just a minute. But maybe. with, yeah, maybe. <laughs> with the white gold, to solve some of these problems, they've come up with new alloys. And they've actually been out for quite a while now, but they've come out with alloys that eliminate the nickel and now use palladium, which is a platinum metal, in place of that nickel to turn it white. And so what we have is we have a hypoallergenic concoction of metals pretty much. And I'll bet you that if it's nickel free and they got palladium or platinum in it, that they use gallium. Yes. Not not very much. They don't need very much. No, it's like much. a like a pinch of salt in there, in there or whatever, but yeah, that, that, you know, and this goes back quite a ways whenever we first saw, well, they called it uh, platinum sterling silver, is we just couldn't figure out how they alloyed the two together because we knew that the melting point was all screwed up. Though, actually before that came out, and I know we're going back to the silver oh, again here real quick, but um, actually it's probably been... 15 years ago now we actually we saw what the problem was with the sterling silver and kind of wanted to solve it ourselves 
And at that time, the Palladium was really starting to come into the market where it was a little bit more available, um, especially as like casting grains. And so it was like, okay, well, let's try it. It's melting temperatures a little less than platinum. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can probably use our equipment to cast it because with platinum you have to have special equipment because it's melting temperature is so high. But anyway, we were actually able to alloy our own palladium sterling silver. And that was probably five years before anybody else actually came out with it. And we were making pieces with well, it at that time. Well, let's say commercially. I'm going to yeah, say. Commercially, yeah, commercially. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was, that was something we did. And then we noticed that this was really becoming popular in white gold using um, palladium in the white gold alloys to eliminate that nickel allergy. And it's worked really well. Um, the casting part of it, which is on our side that we've got to deal with, works a little bit different um, just because of melting point and kind of how it reacts. So we but, basically uh, just have to adjust a few we just, things. I yeah, mean, it's, it's not, minor adjustments. It's not like we're going from gold to platinum. Right, yeah. right. There but are some the, major adjustments Yeah, there. but the great thing is, too, is it does stay, it seems to stay whiter longer because with the nickel alloys, um, for some reason, they like to have kind of a yellow tint well, it's almost or like, cast to them. It's almost like the nickel is going to say, oh, I'll let the yellow peek out for a little bit or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's and you kind polish of like, it and it goes back white, but with with the palladium alloys, we don't really have that problem. Yeah. Um, and so they stay whiter longer. And uh, we also don't have the issue of being possibility of having an allergic reaction with it mm. and stuff like that a little more expensive but it is a little more expensive so that's why it hasn't like caught on with all the manufacturers yet most of them are still using that nickel yeah and it, whenever alloy. whenever this was kind of weird you know before 70 what i'll say 78 77 somewhere in there you know white gold was was really popular mm-hmm and then whenever the Italians came up with a way to make the machine-made chain, chain yeah, all their machine-made chain was made in yellow gold. Yeah. So, you know, you go from almost Mr. T. You almost go from one year, <laughs> one year white gold is popular to the next year you can't hardly really find it. Yeah. You know, because everybody, you know, finally we can afford chain because it's not handmade. You know, yeah. machines are making it by the mile. Where, you know, it takes some some guy. Yeah like a year to make a mile <laughs> oh yeah so but whenever you know yellow gold takes over and then whenever um who is the designer that teamed up with the platinum oh um well anyways he brings yeah. the white back and it seems like that you know that funny. period period of <laughs> <laughs> that period of years they forgot how to make white gold because whenever they first came out with started making when white gold got popular again you know, we had the problem with uh, basically discoloring. It started to get this tinny look, you know, a little bit of yellow. Yeah, but that was kind of the same thing. Once they started making the white chain the same way, it was like overnight, yellow was no longer popular. So then all the jewelry stores well, were stuck with yellow gold. <laughs> it was Scott K. It was there you Scott, go. Scott yeah. K and the Platinum Guild that basically moved us to white. It's not... Yeah. And it hasn't it hasn't ever returned to the yellow. We've sold no, some more they yellow, keep, but they keep talking about you know that the, the yellow is coming back. The coast the yellow is coming back. Coast through yellow, you know, it'll be coming. And but but that's maybe, been ten years, yeah. and we still haven't seen. Normally, that. that's maybe two or three years before it gets to the hinterlands. But. Yeah, and by the way, before we you know get done with this or whatever, um, we are still doing our giveaways. So oh, we didn't even bring that up. We didn't bring that up. I just thought about that. So all you have to do to get entered to win um, a gemstone is comment on our video. Just to say hi or if you have a question or anything like that, all you have to do is comment. We've got our little sticky note wherever it went that's got a number on there. And uh, whoever makes that number of comment gets to win a gemstone. Right. So You know, yeah. if they were doing a question, it's like I said, we need to get a bigger whatever you would call that little deal that I read for the, where the question is at because then it's a little bitty letters out there. Well, yeah, it's on a little bitty screen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we've, we've pretty well covered that, but um, something that's really cool I wanted to kind of bring up was 
the different colors of gold. Mm. Um, this has been something that uh, some of the colors have been around for a long time and still for the, for still, the most part most of them have been around for a long time yeah but it's just that they're not overly common hmm. um especially in the case but you you can actually make pretty much anything with them and still look really nice but a lot of people just haven't seen them but obviously so, we've got white and yellow gold which have always been popular but then we've got rose gold that's actually gained in popularity with and we've done a lot of custom work with with rose gold and basically has a higher copper content in the alloy um, you got green gold that's been around for a long time a lot of people that have seen like the black hills gold jewelry mm -hmm. and stuff there's usually like little the green leaf. gold leaves yeah. and stuff on there and uh, okay that's oh, what that's what makes, where what makes yeah. yellow gold green yeah that's where he was talking about earlier that it doesn't matter how much silver you add to gold it'll never get white. white because the more silver we add to yellow gold the more green it gets it doesn't make sense does it no and then to really throw a wrench in here so are you saying that sterling silver has a shade of green in it no okay so what how do you make green blue and blue and yellow mm-hmm so maybe it's got blue in it I don't know <laughs> <laughs> we're, we need, we're, we need to think don't about don't listen to the speculation here because <laughs> we're getting way off topic anyway so um that's still weird well here's another here's one that's really really weird what's that we're gonna throw this one at you purple and blue gold now this is where it gets really interesting because a guy in the jewelry business that is basically the Einstein of metallurgy. Oh, that's what we call him. Yeah. Um, he actually developed blue gold and purple gold and castable, which is, that was the big challenge was other people had kind of made that color, but it wasn't through and through and it wasn't castable. It was really brittle. It didn't polish right it didn't well, cast right and then the, the other thing is whenever we was talking about green gold it's not as green as what you would think grass is but no um, but on this blue gold it's like pepsi blue oh yeah and the purple is like white like, like purple violet I mean, yeah it's like there is no doubt that it's almost like k-state well, purple you you with us if you're in the jewelry business, you would doubt that it was actually gold, because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you would you know, never, especially if you do, you know, look, you, somebody tells you that's green gold, yeah. and you go, well, I can see there's a uh, yeah, hint of green, I, yeah, we could, but we this could is see like that. this is more than a hint in of your blue. face. Yeah. Did they paint it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lacquer on this. Yeah, and so what that is? Oh, hi, Myrtle. Um, what it is that's actually making that gold? blue and purple is different levels of titanium and you want to talk about a really tough metal to alloy mm. it's much worse than platinum i mean the titanium is maybe just, gallium's used in there too i don't think so but does, does titanium have a high melting point yeah yeah, yeah. i think that gallium's just cool stuff but I'd like the, this, so make me a spoon yeah <laughs> stir, <laughs> my, stir my coffee in, in the, yeah, I have a puddle in there. Yeah, I'll put a little lead in your stomach. <laughs> that ought to do it. <laughs> anyway, oh, Carla thinks we're funny. Well, at least somebody's laughing, yeah. I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, with the titanium, we, we've we never been able to figure it out. Uh, Kretschmer Company still owns all the rights to the blue and purple gold, and I don't think it's ever, the recipe's ever gotten out. Um, yeah, what, what happened... Um, we met Stephen Kretschmer. How long ago was that? Long time 20, ago. Twenty years ago, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not like that. that. No, not, not that, that long. long. Not that long. It's well, probably, probably anyways, been fifteen anyway. And and just a little bit more about him or whatever is we saw a they had a, a basically a runway show and I think that was at Dallas if I remember right. And 
So they had this model that had on these earrings, it was basically a, a <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, a post running through a Cheerio with, <laughs> a, with, washer. with a washer on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. And so I, that sounds a little bit weird. But oh, what, it does sound weird. But what happened is that washer or Cheerio that was that in the middle. Diamond, and it had diamonds around in, the edge. In the middle. Yeah. It bounced up and down and didn't touch the post. Yeah. Or didn't touch the top or the bottom either. But yeah. it moved. So he actually invented a, a metal called polarium. And that polarium basically had a positive and negative. It was polarized, polarized platinum. Yeah. Didn't yeah. even know that was possible. Yeah. So it's just... But the other thing that's kind of bad about this, Stephen Crutchmer died in a motorcycle accident, and that's been several years ago. It's probably been 10 years ago, yeah. Or yeah, close, close to. But his daughter now owns the company. And, daughter and, and wife. Yeah, and uh, they're, to this day, I think they're the only ones that still know how to make purple and blue gold. Um, they've never really released that, and so it's, you know, when you see it, you can pretty much guarantee it, that it's... It's from the Crutchmer's. Yeah. Crutchmer's. Yeah, and it's it's just cool stuff. But yeah, trying to alloy that would be difficult because um, titanium, it's practically indestructible. Um, it's extremely extremely durable. Um, it's not yeah, extremely you hard. You can scratch it and you can change its uh, texture and stuff. But to try and break titanium. Um, I mean that's it's crazy. It's extremely strong. So whenever you add that into gold, you get something that you're wanting to you know bend and twist and set stones in and stuff like that. It's it's very difficult to work with. And so um, you know, and I've, we've never had any of the the blue, blue gold or, or the purple. So I've seen it. Yeah, but I don't I've never know. Worked I don't with know how. It. Yeah, I don't know how hard it is to work with. Yeah. It it sounds like it's pretty difficult, but um, it's kind of it's cool stuff. Just just to go by, and, and you know, the only time we would see him is when we went to to the trade shows or whatever. And you know, to visit with him, you you wouldn't think that he was as brilliant, I guess, as what he was. Yeah. I mean, he, he he didn't talk try to talk over your head or anything like that but it's kind of a shame he easily could yeah easily could. <laughs> and yes we brenda we did say purple gold yes yeah, yeah. but i don't know huh he died in 06. Oh, six. so it's been 11 years yeah it wouldn't wow. have been that long so i'll bet it's what it was 20 years ago before when we first met him or when i first met him yeah something like that but cool stuff um and so that pretty much brings us to platinum. We yeah. kind of brought up the platinum group and everything, but uh, so in the platinum group, like I said, we've got platinum, palladium, ruthenium, iridium, rhodium, and osmium. Osmium. There and might, there might even be another emium. Yeah, this minium is in there. You just put some letters and then uh, inium. I'm not sure where cadmium fits in there. I'm not sure if cadmium's one or not. I don't think so. Anyway, the ones that we t typically are using in the jewelry business is going to be the platinum, palladium, rhodium, and then either ir iridium or ruthenium for some of those alloying purposes of platinum. Um, and whenever we're talking about platinum, you know, most people think that it's going to be in high-end jewelry and stuff, and normally it is. Um, usually the pieces are heavier, not only in just weight, but they're basically the structure of the piece is made a little heavier. You can get some finer, I guess, pierced pieces and stuff like that, but platinum is very soft. Um, so whenever we're setting stones, we definitely want to make sure and have enough prong. But the great thing about platinum is it virtually does not wear. So like whenever we're polishing gold and silver and any of these other metals, we have, you know, if you have scratches and stuff on it, you basically have valleys and then you have ridges. And in order to get a, a polish on there, we need to level that surface out as smooth as possible. So. You go and polish it and you actually remove the ridges down to the valleys. With platinum and palladium, the way that they act is more like Play-Doh. So when they like, get scratches... Like thick 
yeah, really thick Play-Doh. So like whenever you get the scratches in those, you still have the valleys and ridges, but when you go to polish, polish, you mm. actually push the valleys or push the ridges I down like, into the valleys. I like smush. You smush it? Yeah. <laughs> Technical <laughs> terms. <laughs> smush it down into those valleys and basically level that out. So it's so kind of like actually, working dirt. You don't actually remove metal. Yeah, it's kind of like working dirt versus working on wood. So, because the wood, in order to get down to a smooth surface, you're going to have to sand it and so remove it's like, some. It's like mud and wood. Yeah. And with the dirt, you're going to have to move it around mud. to level out mud. mud. You're going to have to smoosh the mud <laughs> around to level the things out. We're almost like kind of like concrete. Yeah. Before it sets up. Yeah, very true. And so you're not actually removing it much metal at all. And so that's kind of nice because it's not needed to work on as often for like retipping prongs and things like that where it's wearability that it's yeah because you know a lot of people metal. will come in that that know a little bit and you know say that it's, the ring maybe it's been in the family for 70 years mm -hmm. you know and it's been worn almost constantly for 70 years a gold ring would be worn out unless it was just really heavy yeah but uh, the platinum you know, granted, it's still going to get somewhere. You're still going to remove metal, but there's there's rings out there or things that's been made in platinum that hundred yeah. years old plus. Yeah, yeah. And so it's the the. But it's easier to scratch. It's easier to scratch. Yeah, it takes um, a little more maintenance. It does take a little bit more maintenance as far as keeping that nice and polished. And a lot of a lot of platinum jewelry will be engraved, which is basically like a planned scratch. Mm -hmm. And the reason they do that is so they don't have to keep polishing it all the time. You know, yep. that you kind of break up those polished surfaces so you don't notice that the littler areas are scratched because you've got bigger areas that's got a scratch in it already. Yeah. So, you know, there's earlier platinum pieces. A lot of that was hand engraved, which is basically a planned scratch. Yep. So and that the other thing would be is there was a lot of times that platinum piece maybe would be paved or paved with diamonds yep. because again you didn't have to worry about polishing polishing it <laughs> um, so when we have somebody come in and they ask for like a platinum solitaire ring we really try and push them to just do like an 18 karat white gold one because they're probably not going to be happy with the result of that platinum yeah, solitaire that, ring in about a month and, and we'll have people come in that have bought something like that that solitaire and they go man i just can't keep this thing polished it's all always dull and, <laughs> yeah. and they go well that's platinum yeah uh, considerable quit laying bricks with your jewelry on <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> quit you know the other thing is it's considerably that piece of jewelry is considerably heavier or denser than yep. what there we go i don't know says, what that was about did it say fresh or refresh reconnect oh i thought so, so. it was neither I thought it was fresh. It was fresh on there. Gabe says that this is the first time he's seen you at work without a tie. Uh, no, this is the second time because you commented on it one other time. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, anyway, back to back to this. So, the, the other thing is with, with the Platinum Group and um, the alloys there is a lot of times to harden that platinum just a little bit they will add one of the other platinum group metals which is harder and that's usually either ruthenium or iridium and they can add in the u.s they can add up to 10 percent and it still be called a platinum because what if they add more if they add more it's it's an alloyed metal and it's not technically platinum so just, what, what do they call it it's an alloyed metal it's an no, alternative. I mean, it's an it. alternative metal. Well, the main thing is, is nobody wants to do that because then you've got a really expensive metal that you can't sell as platinum. Oh. Just like with gold, anything below ten carat is not considered gold in the U.S. And you can go to England. In England, you can go down to nine carat, but uh, in Italy, the lowest you can go is eighteen carat. And there's some some pieces in Mexico that you can go lower than eight. Yeah, <laughs> and they may be stamped 10. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, with the platinum, 
to make it a little bit harder, sometimes there is iridium or ruthenium mixed in there, and then that has to be labeled on on that piece what the other alloy is. So if it's a if it says 900 PT on a piece of jewelry, it's 900 platinum. And oh, then I thought will... that's 900 points. No. Oh. And then next to that, it should have an either IR or RH, uh, or no, RT, RT, next to it, and a 10 that tells what the other 10% is. And uh, gold, they don't have to do that, but with platinum, they do. So I know a lot that confuses a lot of people when they see that 900 PT. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's stamped 950. It, it ought to be like LT and RT, and then they'd think it's left and right. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. But in recent years, um, the, other, the other metal that's kind of really come about, and there's actually a whole group pushing it, is palladium. Mm. Um, another platinum metal, it's about half the price. And that's what, PD? So it's pound? Yeah. Yeah, PD. <laughs> and uh, with palladium, now that stuff's a little bit more interesting to work with. Um, it has some of the characteristics of platinum in its workability, and it has some of the characteristics of gold. And it's a little darker, a little darker white. Yeah, it's more of a gunmetal color. Not, well, it's a little more gray, I guess you yeah, could say. I don't think gunmetal. Um, it's real sticky. Um, really? The times that I've worked with it, it's yeah, it's really sticky. Stacky's gloves. So no, you don't get but any on your fingers. Like when we're when we're trying to sand it or polish oh. it, it really gums up the the bits and stuff. You, when you try and drill it to set stones. You, you have, have to, to hit the buff with a torch and melt it out? No, oh. no, it, no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> but anyway, its properties are, are very different. Um, it does hold a polish a lot better than what platinum does, but it's maybe even a little bit more difficult to get to that polish. Because it's so sticky, it's just, it's got a weird surface tension to it that, um, Whenever it feels pressure, it so it starts it's to gum not, up. Whenever you start to take it off the buff, do you see like a little stringer of? No, it's not that sticky. It's not like <laughs> tacky sticky. It's oh. like kind of sticky sticky. It's like kind of gummy. Was it your coffee? I don't know. I know it was somebody. It was working on that chandelier till one in the morning. I think that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, there's there are a lot of metals out there that we do use in the jewelry industry and we hope that this is in some form or another enlightened you <laughs> to some of how the, how they work um i don't know that this was the clearest <laughs> episode we've ever done but um probably maybe one of the more confusing ones <laughs> so there's that you always got to have those right there should be some questions Look at him. Yeah, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's questions. It's maybe not ones we want to answer, you know, like what is in your coffee? <laughs> the creamer went bad a couple weeks ago apparently. <laughs> Didn't even use any. Yeah. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. So anyway, we thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll announce who the winner is um shortly. We're gonna let some more of those comments kind of flow in, but like we said, <laughs> Um, and keep the comments constructive, yeah. uh, especially after this episode. <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, Gabe, palladium is very strange to work with. Um, yes. What? What have you been drinking? <laughs> it's just coffee. Coffee with some sugar in it. What kind of sugar? It's a white, white sugar. Is that sugar alloy? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Anyway, yeah. Little, um, if you guys do want to comment on this, um, that's how you enter to win. And be sure to check in with us each week here on Family Jewels. And um, yeah, that kind of does it for our medals. It <laughs> well, did a little so, bit weirder than we had planned. But. Some, some of them. We, we'll <laughs> talk about some more here later. So <laughs> yeah, we'll it's we'll come back one day. Yeah, we'll come back and probably next week talk about the alternative medals. Okay. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. And again, we'll be announcing this week's winner uh, a little bit later. We'll post it in the comments on, on this video. But thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.